Welcome back, NYC Fragrance family. Bringing you a list of spring. Now, there's going to be some weird ones in here. There's going to be some you've heard of. There's going to be some different ones. You're going to have different price points. I'm giving you 10 fragrances that I would say are best for spring, at least out of my collection, without giving you the most obvious. Like, Green Irish Tweed is not in this list. Sorry to disappoint you, but that's just the way it is. I know in the comments, you guys are going to give me all different ones that you think should have been in the list, but my list right so I'm giving you 10 fragrances listen I have a lot of fragrances and I enjoy just about all of them I don't think there's one that I don't like so when I'm giving you 10 recommendations they're ones that I like so these 10 fragrances in all different price points I think I got good amount of balance of niche designer mid price so on and so forth so let's get into it first fragrance I got here it's a niche one Great rhubarb note. I always think of it as a great fragrance of spring. Parfums Cortana Mandrake. This is definitely a great spring spring fragrance as far as I'm concerned. You know, it lasts, it projects, it smells great on you. It has what I consider to be a spring fragrance. Florals fruitiness not overly bound with citrus but has like in more of an herbaceous floral quality those type of fragrances for me are more the spring type fragrances so that's why mandrake makes the list it even made number one on one of my spring lists once before it deserves it i just like reaching for this one you know i can't obviously i don't wear it every day i don't wear it 10 times if I get to wear it twice during a season, it's probably a lot because I have a lot of fragrances and I go through them. But I do definitely recommend this one. If you haven't smelled it, check it out. Next one on the list is from a great house. They have a lot of bright, light, easy to wear, niche style fragrances or niche fragrances. It is considered a niche house. From Hitched Water Parfums, 1828. This one here, the eucalyptus note, the powderiness, the light creaminess, the barbershop-esque vibe. It's just a clean scent. It's, to me, a spring fragrance without a doubt. It's got enough versatility probably to be worn all year round depending on the type of person you are. But for me, it's definitely, if you're going by season, spring is probably the best season for this fragrance in my opinion. This fragrance right here has been number one on my spring list before. It's been in the top three for sure. It's a staple. It's one that I'm always going to reach for. The mint note in this is unbelievable. The citruses, everything about it. And this brand just makes exquisite fragrances. From the House of Zerjoff, 1861 Renaissance. Now you know this fragrance. If you, if you don't... If you're looking for a Zerzhov to get into, the 1861 line is definitely the most value for you. They're not the most expensive. I believe this 100 ml was $195 direct from Zerzhov. And I got four free samples, which is great. <laughs> the stuff in the air. I mean, it is fantastic. And this is a long lasting, light, bright, floral, white floral that mint, like I said, it's just it's just a fantastic fragrance. I fell in love with it when I first smelled it, got a sample of it, and I had to get me a bottle. 1861 Renaissance. The next fragrance, very similar to the last one. Mint is prominent here. Although this one may not be as citrusy, some people have an issue with this fragrance. I don't understand what it is, but mint and rose, this fragrance is just fantastic. From the house of a tot libre de orange, you or someone like you. This fragrance right here is definitely on many people's spring lists without a doubt. And it's there for good reason. It is a fantastic fragrance. And for a niche house, a Tot Libre de Orange doesn't break the bank. You actually get in for price of like a Chanel or a Dior at retail price. Well worth trying, well worth checking out. I think these 50 mLs were less than $100. So, I mean, if you have a collection, go for 50 ml. You don't need 100 ml of something like this. 
unless you absolutely love it and then you feel like you need it. For me, the 50ml does just fine and smells fantastic. Yeah, this is this is one of those. I you know, come April, this is something I'm rocking for sure. I I actually grabbed this quite a few times during the season, and you know, for 50ml, you see some of that level. It's a good amount out of that bottle for someone who has probably close to 500 bottles in his collection at this point. It's definitely, definitely one that I reach for. I love this fragrance. It's fantastic. The next fragrance, well, this one may have taken the place of a fragrance or maybe meant to be summer only, but to me, because of the mint note, whenever I have the note of mint in a fragrance, I always think spring. I don't think summer. Summer for me is more about the citruses. Here you got more of a cooling, minty, spearminty with, with an almond note in there. And I think I might have just given it away. From the house of Guerlain comes L'Homme Ideal Cool. Now this one here, this one for some reason just out of the whole line, most people just don't care for it. I don't know why. I mean, I, from the first moment I wore it and sprayed it on and I gave it a good wearing, I really said this is a really nice fragrance and it fits right into that low media line perfectly. I know, you know, people tend to favor the cologne, low media cologne over this. And I get it. They discontinue that. Some people are upset about that, that they feel like this shouldn't replace it. And I get where you're coming from. I do enjoy that one a little more than this fragrance, but I still enjoy this one. I actually, I don't think there's one in the line that I don't enjoy. I have the entire line and it's, to me, the budget friendly way to get into Guerlain without a doubt, especially if you're a man, these are, you know, loam colognes, loam fragrances. They're meant for men, but women can also try them, try to pull them off if they like, but they are definitely made for the man. I. Just smelling this lingering in the air after I just sprayed it. It's it's a really nice fragrance. I mean, it's hard to it's been hard to find at discount sites for some reason, but I think it's going to become a little more prevalent, kind of like the way Cologne was, where it got down into the thirty dollar ranges. I think I picked this up somewhere in a forty ish dollar range, which is a good value. That's the way I look at it. Hundred ml bottle. I you know I just I I like it. That's all I could say. I I you know. Everybody else has their opinions about it. I tend to like it. The next one I think is just a versatile all year round fragrance. The latest version of the Hugo Boss bottled line. The Eau de Parfum. This is just fantastic stuff. I love Hugo Boss bottled intense. The Apple Note, this one just isn't as abrasive, maybe not as loud. This is more of a subtle, more adult version of Boss Bottled. But I wore it and people just, they could, I, I came across, I think at least five people that had to ask me what I was wearing. They wanted to see the bottle because they know I carry the bottles when I'm wearing through the day. When I do my testing, I tend to carry my bottle with me. So they couldn't, you know, they couldn't stop. They were like, it smells amazing. I love it. What is it? And then I told them how much I found it for, and I couldn't believe it that it was that cheap. Because I think this is going on discount sites for around $60 now, which, you know, most people don't know, or most people that are not into this, like we are, that know about all these sites, tend to pay retail. So when they go buy a bottle of this, they're paying over $100. When you tell them $60, they think it's a big bargain. For us, if it's not $30, $40, or maybe even less than that, then it's no real cheapy or really inexpensive. $60 still seems to be a decent amount of money to be spending for us because we know where to find the discounts. But listen, if you want something early, you're gonna pay some you're gonna pay some money. You're not gonna get it for dirt cheap. This fragrance, I think, was I was happy that I got it. I have a lot of the boss bottle fragrances. I enjoy just about every single one of the ones that I own. And further down the line, I'll do some videos on some of them and go over some of them and talk about some of them and give you some more suggestions. But this Boss Bottle 2020 version, fantastic stuff. These last four are gonna be 
in the cheaper realm. You're going to find these for less than $40. And some of them are steals for those prices. The first one here is Dunhill Century. This for me, I fell in love with this stuff when I first got it. It's just a beautiful Neroli sandalwood type fragrance. It, some people say it smells kind of like Santal 33 from Lila Bow. I'm not really that, that familiar with that fragrance, so I can't speak on that, but I love this fragrance. It's just clean, it's fresh. It's definitely a spring fragrance in a bottle. Versatility, day and night, dressed up, casual. It, I just, it's a great fragrance. The blue version of this is a compliment getter for sure. People like that because you add, you take this and you add a little bit of that blue type DNA, a little aquatic vibe, and that one's really good too. And they're both coming in at good prices. This one here, I think, is around $40 now. Absolutely great fragrance as far as I'm concerned. One of the coolest ways to take a cap off too it's almost like a magnetic and it has to twist off it won't come straight off unless you really tug on it you twist and it comes right up something stupid but you know i think it's cool the next one is an old fragrance but this one is almost like one of those dua uh blend inspirations but it's not a dua from jeffrey bean comes bowling green I think I got a little bit too much light going on today. Some days, I don't know. Shooting these videos sometimes works out great. And sometimes, I don't know, things just don't seem to be 100%. Anyway, so to going back to the fragrance. To me, this is like a blend of Green Irish Tweed and Bois de Portugal. If you took those two fragrances, combine them, that's what you get here. You get it at 20 bucks. Performance on this surprisingly very good i got a good six hours on this fragrance so i had to respray towards the end of my day but well worth it and i've given it a couple of wears you can see right there you know is for again someone with a lot of bottles there's a good level of juice out of this i i was shocked that it was as good as it was when i got it it was a blind buy and i'm i'm happy that i picked it up for 20 bucks it was well worth it and I definitely recommend it highly for spring. Why? It has that green Irish tweed-esque thing going on, but then it also has my beautiful favorite style of fragrance, the Fougere. The next one, in keeping with the theme of a lot of the fragrances in this video, Mint, comes another cheap one from the House of Azaro, Wild Mint. Out of the Sensual Blends line, most reviewers, for the most part, tended to favor this one and Ginger Lover as being their number one or number two choice from the line. This one here, in the spring, I'll go, yeah, this is something I'm gonna rock. My favorite out of the line was Hot Pepper. I don't know why, it's one of the weirder ones, but I just kinda, I, something about it I just like. Ginger Lover I enjoy, Amber Fever was pretty cool. This one here, I wasn't totally sold on. I don't know, it's just, I, it was kind of sweet, but then for the spring though, I this is a, this is definitely a fragrance I could see because it's got a sweetness, it's got the mint, it's fresh, the price is great, it lasts a pretty good long time for a cheap fragrance. So again, that's why I'm recommending it for the spring. If you don't know the fragrances from this line, you're gonna find one that you like for sure. All up and down the line, they're all pretty good. The only one I didn't really think I was so great was Naughty Leather. It was it was good, but it wasn't something that I really was like excited about. But the the other four, including here, Wild Mint, definitely something to check out. The last fragrance is like not an oddball, but something that you probably either haven't heard of, don't know about. Not many people talk about it. I think I, I saw it from one reviewer. I blind bought it based on what I was hearing and the notes and so on and so forth. From Odd Al Zafran comes Diram. Oral etching on the back of the bottle too. It's pretty cool. Cap's cheap, it's plastic. 
But this here is for those men that want to have bright white florals with an herbaceousness. That's what I get here. This is definitely sweet, bright, clean white florals in a bottle. But in essence, it also has this elegant vibe to it. Like it's, this is definitely something that can be pulled off by both sexes for sure. But on a man dressed up, you get this clean soapy vibe, but you get that floral thing. It's just elegant and it's cheap, which is the thing I can't get is the, the price on this. It's like $30. And it lasts and lasts and lasts. It is one of those fragrances that for sure you're getting your money's worth. If you want something with florals, you want to get into florals as a man, this is the way to do it. It's light enough. It's not so feminine that it's going to put you off. You're going to put it on at first if you're not into florals and you're not going to be so sure. And then as you wear it and you smell it through the day, you're going to be like, wow, this is some nice stuff. I, re I think I think I really like this. It's not. You got to give your fragrances a chance sometimes because a lot of times your initial impression may not get you to like it. And this one did that for me. And then as I wore it a couple of times, I was like, wow, this is actually pretty good stuff. And I'm happy I picked this one up. It was, a rec was recommended by a one reviewer that I do watch. He's not talked about a lot. He's not very popular. And the fragrance isn't talked about a lot or very popular. But I'm glad I got it. That's my last recommendation for spring. I'm going to try to link everything that I've talked about in the video below. So it gives you a chance to where to find them. And I hope you enjoyed the list. I hope this list helps you. Get a couple of picks or pickups for spring that you may not have heard about or you may not have. And until the next time, remember, if you smell good, you feel good. Have a nice day.